Welcome back, everyone. And it's a pleasure to have with us today Lewis Smith. And Lewis is the volunteer director at the Thompson McDuffie Museum. And he is retired and really given back. That's an awesome mm -hmm. thing Thank that you, you do. Lewis has a number of things to talk to us today about, including the museum and an exhibit um, about the Jewish faith and a book that he has written about actually the namesake for Thompson, Georgia, J. Edgar Thompson, right. who was the big railroad executive he was. with I've, Georgia Railroad. Yes, he constructed it. It was a great man. Um, I have been able to read some of the book. It's very, very interesting. And it focuses on a specific period of time because Thompson was not from Georgia. No. He came here from Pennsylvania. Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But he made a very, very big impact, a lasting impact on, on Georgia and yes. on the railroad system. One thing I really like that you said about him, and it's simply because of my history yes. as um, being from a Quaker family, was oh, that he was I a Quaker and it was reflected in the kind of businessman he was. Yes, yes. I was surprised um, about the Quaker faith. I didn't know you didn't have to be a Christian to be a Quaker. That was something. And, and the Quakers believe that a little bit of God is in every person. And that's why they don't believe in taking anybody's life or fighting. So. And they don't believe in titles either. When I was at a Quaker college, yeah. we called everyone was by their first name. Yes, yeah, so that's great. The college yeah. president, they, we yeah. didn't use titles yeah. because there's that of God in each of us yeah. according to the faith. And I didn't mean to get off on Quakerism here, <laughs> but you don't see it all the time. No. And so that was, that was neat for me. But Thompson had a big economic impact, of course. Oh, yes. But he wasn't that kind of a greedy businessman as no. so many of his contemporaries might have been. That's exactly right. He could have amassed a fortune that J.P. Moore or uh, Carnegie or Vanderbilt built, uh, made, but he didn't do that. He, he, uh, he gave back and he just wasn't gr a greedy man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, talk a little bit about the, what, what the railroad system was like at the time. You have a great picture in your book. Mm -hmm. And if you could just imagine driving from Augusta to Atlanta, the train stops were kind of yes. what we see now as exits on the highway. You it see is, all the yes, down. yes. Well, coming out of Augusta, um, well, he came in 1834. They had already kind of planned a little bit of the layout. Uh, when he got there, he noticed, though, that he could move the uh, exit from Augusta to go towards Atlanta. See, the, Atlanta wasn't a city or anything. They were only so allowed to go to Union Point. And so okay. on the way to Union Point, he, the first thing he did was devise a way to go down through near Lily Tulip and avoid where they had planned on going and saved them from building an incline where the railroad had to stop and they had to have mules pull them up this hill. And he, so that was the first thing he did. He saved them a ton of money there. Wow. But the first stop out of Augusta was called Bell Air, B-E-L-L, -L, separate word, A-I-R. And it took um, uh, 50 cents and it was... Uh, you know, just like 10 miles, and it took uh, uh, 50 minutes. And then the next stop uh, Wait, was... Is that what Bel Air Road is now? Yes, that's right, but it was two words, Bell and Air, and it's <laughs> cute. Uh, and then there was uh, Brasilia, which the only time you ever see Brasilia is uh, one of those green highway markers on the side as you go between Harlem and Fort Gordon. You're right. That's right. Yeah. Only, you know. <laughs> and uh, then you have um, uh, Daring. Yeah. And then you have, uh, and all those stops are like nine or ten miles uh, on the railroad track. They all cost about 50 cents. And then you, you got to Thompson, and then you went on up to Kamek. Well, by the time you got there, the cost to take that ride from Augusta to Kamek was like a dollar and a half. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot of money today, but the people back in those days only made 350 to $450 a year. That was an average salary, north and south, uh, blue collar and white collar. So that was a lot of money. But, uh, and also I, I spoke to Kiwanis yesterday and um, I said, well, and the whole trip between Augusta and Kamek took three hours and 50 minutes or about what it takes to take I-20 today. So <laughs> that was it. <laughs> no doubt with all the construction we have. That's right. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, your humor comes through, mm -hmm. and you said you took, you know, it's basically, you said it's 
90% fact. Yes. And then there were just some things that you had to take a little liberty with. I, did. I thought it was interesting about the white ladies' ball yes. with Sherman. Yes. In fact, yes. Being, a, being a part yeah. of that. That's a, I like that story too. Uh, there was a 1844 white ladies' ball, and that I put in there. That was back in the time you could have, say, black or white, and without somebody having a heart, heart attack. attack. Yeah. And it was at the Augusta Arsenal. I put it there, but I, in reality, it would have probably been in a mansion down here in Augusta. Right. But Sherman, most people don't know that, that William T. Sherman was a lieutenant at the Augusta Arsenal from 1843 to 1844. Now, see, that's the fact. Yes. Now, and I put in the book that uh, uh, Edgar Thompson made him at the ball, bumped into each other, and they started talking. And, uh, and I had to put it at the Augusta Arsenal so that uh, the lowly lieutenant Sherman could, could attend. Yeah. Wow. But um, it was... Um, Th that was my largest stretch, I say in the book, that everything I said there that Sherman said, talking in conversation with Edgar Thompson was a fact. I took it from a letter that Sherman wrote, but not in 1844, but in 1855. So I had to bring some things back and forth, move them around from the time period so yeah. I could get them in the book. Makes but sense. that's what I talk about, like 5% of it or 10% of it was to connect the dots because I don't know that they ever really met or <laughs> talked to each other. And that's why it's a novel, not just a, not just a dry history, history right. book, fact after fact. Right. Well, I wanted to let you tell us a little bit too about an exhibit coming up. They're wrapping me. They're saying we're just about out of time. Okay. But um, talk about the illumination of Jewish life in the CSRA, this exhibit. The exhibit starts on the 17th of uh, July and uh, we've had uh, some wonderful cooperation. Eric Montgomery uh, came uh, last weekend and uh, Jack Steinberg and we've got Robin Wittenberg uh, Dudley from Somerville, South Carolina and she really uh, wants to have a Jewish museum and so I let her, we let her, the board, use our museum as a springboard so she can see if she has some other people interested. But we have a lot of information from the 150th uh, anniversary they had and we've got the three synagogues in Augusta participated. Yes. I worked on it today. I was surprised that they wanted a lot of stuff about the Holocaust wow. and so there's a lot of stuff in there about the concentration camps which I didn't I didn't know if they'd be offended by that uh -huh. but they have uh, embraced that. They want that word to be out. It's very important. Well we want to help you get that word out and I also want you to know how you can get the book that Lewis has written. Take a look now at the information you need to pick up your copy of Lewis's book. Again, it's called J. Edgar Thompson, The Georgia Railroad Years, 1833 to 1845. And you can pick it up at the Thompson McDuffie Museum or just order it from Amazon. And by the way, proceeds benefit the Thompson Museum. Thank you so much for well, being here Well, thank you, today. Jenny. Good to see Pleasure you again. Pleasure to have you yes, here. Thank Absolutely. You. Coming up, the upcoming performance at Fort Gordon Dinner Theater is sure to make you laugh. Laurie Easterlin and Justin Moldy tell us about it after the break. Hey, 